How the heck do you program a factory defaulted network node? Let's talk about that. So you have a brand new network node or you factory defaulted one and you need to reprogram it. How the heck do you do that? In this episode, we're gonna talk about that and the steps you need to do to program that on your NetBox controller. The first thing you'll need to do on your laptop or your desktop computer is be on the correct network. So the network IP address for a defaulted network node or micro node is 192.168.0.251. So one of the first things you're gonna to have to do is change the network on your computer. So most likely, like mine is set to DHCP, you'll have to go into your network settings and change your network, your ethernet port to match that of the controller. You can plug your laptop or desktop into the network node itself. So I'm gonna right click, I'm gonna hit properties, bring up your TCP version 4 IP address and then I'm going to change my IP address from DHCP to 192.168.0.100. I always use 100. Subnet mask 255 and your default gateway, it doesn't really matter. And hit OK. Hit OK again. And then close this out. next thing you'll have to do is open up a new tab and then go into the IP address of 192.168.0.251 and that'll bring you to the network node configuration page. So after you navigate to the IP address of 192.168.0.251 you'll see the login page and you'll log in with the default username of admin. So the first page gives you basically your node ID, some the fact that it's disconnected, the IP address, your serial number, all the happy stuff that you need to know that no one really needs to know. You have your network tab, and this is where you're going to use to change the IP address of that network node. Put in the IP address of your network controller. The last tab is your security tab. I recommend definitely changing the password of admin to anyone who knows anything about anything. <laughs> change the IP address, the default, change you the uh, uh, the username from the default is highly recommended at all times. S2 does have some security features in it, so if you leave the default username and password of admin on a S2 network node or micro node, and that door is closed, you still can't log in. So that's kind of a one security feature that they do have. Um, they can also, uh, unless you have this allow logins when locked, checked. So if you allow logins when locked, checked, um, and you change your password, then you'll be able to log in when it's locked. And disable the web service when SSH is disabled. What that does, basically, this web page that you're on right now, you won't be able to navigate to it if SSH is disabled. So all we're gonna focus on right now is the network. We're gonna change the IP address to something on my range. You'll have to get this information from your network administrator if you don't already know what the IP address that you're gonna be assigned is going to be. So for my example, I'm gonna use 10.0.0.83, subnet mask of 255.255.255.0, and the gateway of 10.0.0.1. My network controller, this will be different for you obviously than it will be for me, but my network controller is 10.0.0.201. The auto revert button. This is actually kind of a, a neat little uh, security feature. <laughs> um, if you leave this checked and hit submit and it does not connect to a network controller and you do not enable it within, I believe it's 10 minutes, I'll verify that and put a little thing right here. Um, it will automatically revert back to factory defaults and your IP address of 192.168.0.251 will be in there. If you deselect auto revert and hit submit, make sure 
that everything is correct in here or you're gonna have to go to the, to the network node itself and factory default it manually. So um, I'm gonna leave auto revert on and I'm gonna hit submit. This is warning, it gives you this warning pop up and hit okay. And then, okay again. So as you can see in the network, uh, in the activity log, this network node has popped up and is communicating to my network controller. I still have to make sure that I enable it or it could auto revert back to factory defaults. So I'm gonna hit the configuration button, site settings, node status. You can see your network node right here. I can rename this if I want to. Uh, the first thing I want to do is enable it. So I'm going to click, slide this little button over to enabled and hit save. At that, at this point that the network node is online, well it says disconnected now, the LED on this network node, oh, I already switched, ch changed it. The LED on your network node is now blue, which means it's connected and communicating with your network controller. So now you have your network node communicating with your network controller and you can go about programming everything that's associated with this network node as you normally would. If it's a brand new node and you have nothing on it, then you'll have to start from scratch and start programming your readers, your inputs, your output blades, your portals, and everything that is associated with a network node or micro node if you were doing a micro node. Hopefully this video added value to your day. If it did, let me know by hitting that like button and we'll see you in the next one. And recorded by this Axis network camera. There is no point in destroying me. The video is already stored at another site and a notification has been sent. I'm trying to record. Have a nice day. Thanks. I would.